I am a 22-year-old recent college graduate, and I have student debt that transcends the amount that President Biden wants to forgive. But I don't want his handout. That there, spokesman for Colorist United, Christian Watson, sharing some of his thoughts on President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. Just a tease, because he's joining us now and he can expand on that. Christian, thanks so much for coming on today. Our producer saw that clip. It went viral, essentially, online. Uh, you were taking issue with the president's plan to forgive some student loans, $10,000 to $20,000 in forgiveness. Tell me about what inspired you to post it and what issue do you take most with the president's plan? Yeah, well, I think that there is unfortunately a sort of uh, mass acceptance of this kind of behavior from the executive branch. And that's quite concerning. And a country can, a country founded, uh, in fact, on individual self-reliance and grit and will and the perseverance of the individual over the government, over a monarch in that case, I found it really odd that a lot of people, especially people my age, 22, were out there begging the government to um, relieve them of their obligations. And that's really the issue that matters the most to me. You know, in the Declaration of Independence, right below um, the first few lines, Jefferson says that Americans have a right, but we also have a duty to break the yoke of an oppressive government if one were to arise. But that duty is not merely about an oppressive government. It's also about how we treat one another, how we regard our obligations and our promises. And that is the linchpin of American society. Biden is challenging the very organizing principle of American society by saying, you don't have to fulfill a promise that you undertook. And by doing that, he is but he is imperiling the entire society by potentially causing other people to, in other areas of their life, evaluate themselves and say, well, maybe I don't need to take this promise either. It's concerning and it's a bad precedent. And I want to be the person, at least one of the persons that says this has got to stop. You are going at this uh, plan from the president with a very big picture view of it. Right. And maybe even commentary on the next generation, what we've come to rely on. Uh, no doubt. I can I can get a sense of your background in philosophy. I know you majored in that <laughs> and maybe you can tell from this conversation here. But Christian, there's this argument um, that I'm sure a lot of recent grads are feeling right now. They say college is just too expensive. I've got to go to school if I want to succeed in life. And you know what? The fact that this forgiveness is coming out now is a great sigh of relief. At least I won't have to pay back some of my student loans. What would you say to those students who are celebrating this decision? I sympathize. You know, I have a quite a bit of student loan debt myself. And when I see the numbers sometimes in my account, it makes me a little bit queasy. I understand exactly what they're going through. But I also understand a few other things as well. I understand that in this era of American history, there are more possibilities than ever to create lemons, uh, lemonade out of lemons, per se. There are so many people who are making money and who are actually living very fulfilling careers without even ever going to college. And if they did go to college, they tend to have skills, even if their degrees are not particularly practical, they tend to have certain skills they can apply to ventures that may fall outside of their degree. And that's what we really need to return to in this country. It's dynamic thinking, creative thinking. College is not the ticket to success. Uh, Self-reliance and persistence is. You know, the people on the frontier that expanded the boundaries of this country in the very beginning, when we had no internet, no running water, no TV, they built this country on the basis of their vision and their vision meeting their action and their action being productive. We have more resources than Thomas Jefferson had. We have more um, resources than the founding fathers had. We have more resources than the people who went on the moon had. And you're telling me that you can't use your creative mind with someone who has the entire world at their fingertips to go ahead and create a possibility for yourself. That's what is important, creating possibilities and not following the path that certain people in society have laid out for sure. you. Well, you're very in inspiring and motivating in, in how you're describing our future right there. The possibilities are endless, indeed, especially when you live in America. You're so blessed to do so. Um, and as, as you realize, rightly so, there are folks who decided, I'm not going to go to college. It might be too expensive for me. I don't want to take on that student loan debt. I want to go into the world. I want to work, go to a trade school, maybe contribute to society. And now there's the follow up question of, OK, these student loans are being forgiven for the people who chose to go to college. How are they being paid for? The White House really has yet to answer that question. 
whenever there is a handout, um, whenever there is a tax, there is ultimately an increase in cost in something. So people think that if I get a handout, this is being forgiven and it's free money. No, what happens is the cost is shifted to some other area of society, of government function that will ultimately impact you. And people who don't really understand, you know, uh, the, the economist Frederick Bastiat said what is seen and unseen, they don't understand the unseen consequences of these policies that supposedly have good intentions. And we understand that good intentions do not necessarily create good policy. What creates good policy is good policy founded on sound principles. And as I mentioned before, this policy is not found on sound principles. Nothing is free, and you have an obligation to go ahead and pursue your promises. Mm -hmm. And if we forget both of those two things, I think America will be careening towards destruction. And I don't want to see the country, which in my opinion is the greatest shrine to human freedom on the earth, which is the shining city on the hill, as Reagan so eloquently put it. I don't want to see this country die. I don't want to see this country fall. I want to see us succeed more than ever. But if we're going to succeed, we have to have the principal framework to succeed. And we can only have that if we reject plans like Biden's. Hmm. It, it just so interesting. The points that you're sharing with us today, Christian Watson, we'll have to have you back. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome.